Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And this time, we got the pleasure of watching Zendarial, who plays on the North American server in his tier 9 German medium tank. It is the E50. Now, I think the E50 is a bit of a fan favorite, really. When you do get to this tank after the Panther II, you finally have a good old slug of armor. We're talking about 150 millimeters of upper hull armor, and I believe it's 100 millimeters on the lower plate. And that's actually one of the key differences between this and then its bigger brother, the E50M. I believe the E50M has 120 millimeters on the lower plate and the turret shifts slightly further forwards and it's also got a much better power to weight ratio which is one of the reasons why I think Zendarial is playing this game quite defensively. If I was in maybe something like a T-54 it's lower profile it's got a much better power to weight I'm not sure about the ground resistances but it's much faster than the E-50 is what I'm saying then I might have tried to make an aggressive play right across the center to try and get to this D-4 area because from this D-4 area you can spot all the way out here you can get shots across. It really is a location that you can use to dominate an assault. And talking about dominating an assault, that is what Zendaril is going to have to do here. He has got his work cut out for him because if we take a look at... Well, let's just say that there are a few key players on the enemy team towards their top tier tanks that Zendaril is going to have to target. And as we're going to see, he is going to have to pull off one of the biggest carries, I'd say, in the current patches if he wants to take this one down. So an ISU-122S, that's a, a big difference there. I'd far rather get shot by a 122S than get shot by the 152, even with the 152's penetration nerf. I, I think it's been nerfed from, what, 286 down to about 260? That's still meaty, right? And losing that 750 average hit points would have been disastrous. Of course, if there was one on the enemy team. Now, Zendarial bounces the enemy's E50 from the left, and we can actually see that that E50 is using the 88mm. Now, Wargaming a couple of patches ago gave this tank the opportunity to have another gun on it, which was a bit peculiar in a way. You can't use it on the E50M, but you can use it on the E50. And it's an ultra-fast firing 88mm that also has just slightly more penetration, although you have to go down from 390 alpha to 240 alpha. But you do gain a massive amount of DPM. You've also got a whole variety of other statistics that improve on the gun. I think the aim time as well. I'm not sure about the accuracy, but it is a competitive gun, although a lot of people do just find it hard to be continuously firing with the 88, and so the 105mm is still probably the go-to gun that I would recommend to the, the majority of players, unless you, you truly want to try and push the DPM and know that you're going to be maybe closing the distance and not allowing your opponents to pull back round corners where they're going to have the, the opportunity to not get shot multiple times, and that's where you want to have your higher elf damage guns. Now, one thing that's interesting here is Zendaril is loading some APCR rounds here. He's dabbed that two key. And when you load APCR rounds on the E50, you've got the same penetration as what you have on the E50M and the same shell velocity. The, the tank's gun is pretty much exactly the same as the E50M's as soon as you dab that two key. Now, of course, if the E50M decides to, to fire premium rounds, he does have, what, like 330 or is it 340? One of the two, and that will help you go through the super heavy armor of some of the tier 10s that you're likely to be fighting more often in the tier 10 German medium tank. But it's just an, an interesting thing that a lot of people always make the joke that to many intents and purposes, <laughs> The E50 is is the same as the E50M. As soon as you do damp that 2 key, and quite often you don't need the 270 pen, you can make do with 220. So Zendarial here is putting on an absolute showcase of playing the mid to long range German sniper. But he's also he's also playing quite aggressively with regards to the fact that he's in front of his team. He's spotting out, he's done 861 spotting, and he's probably also spotting for himself the vast majority of the time. Having killed the Tiger, he's now up to three kills, 3,378 damage. This is looking like it's quite a good result. You know, when you're up to, uh, shall we say, a really good game for a tier 9 medium tank, and you've barely lost any of your hit points, yeah, yeah, you know, you, you've got some good opportunities to have a cracker. And also the fact that he has also killed every single tank that has been killed so far on the enemy team. Are we going to be seeing a monster damage, monster kills replay here? We'll have to, to hang, you'll have to hang around to find out. So Zendaril here is firing more APCR rounds at the IS-6. But, you know, I think that's probably the right decision at this kind of range. The 220 is quite likely to, to bounce off that vehicle, whereas the 270 is probably going to go through most of the times, even when the IS-6 is fully angling. 
And considering he's already picked up 5,000 damage, oh, well, make that 5,428 damage, I don't think we can complain too much. Now, the shell velocity on this gun as well is not too bad with your standard rounds. With your standard rounds, it's 1,200, but that goes up to 1,500, as you would have on the E50M with the APCR rounds. So Zendarial really just playing this E50 perfectly right now. Just keeping everybody in front of him. He's got himself into a position. He's side scraping. He's angling his armor very well indeed. That makes his lower plate all the more efficient when it's angled like this. And his upper plate is just absolutely monstrous to get through. And the turret armor, which is 185 on the front of the turret, is quite a small target to hit. And that's one of the strengths of this tank. That unless you hit directly to the left and to the right of the gun, then you're quite likely to bounce off the, off the side of the turret because it is very well angled and I think it's probably only heat that's going to stand a chance of going through that and I'm not sure if heat would still go through if you're pointing your gun directly at them and then again heat does pen up to about 80 or 85 degrees which is absolutely crazy when we think about it. Now, this really just isn't very fair for this T29. Now, the T29 is an incredible tier 7 heavy tank, but when it has to deal with this monstrous German medium bearing down upon it, picking up his top gun now with that sixth kill, and he bounces a high explosive round from the Udes there, 480 damage blocked, and an AP round bouncing off the 185 millimeters of turret armor off the E50. Zendario just carrying his team so hard, but his job is not done yet. He is now up to nearly 10,000 combined damage spotting assistance, and he's barely lost any of his hit points. There you go, over 10k now. What a crazy round. He's practically being continuously firing this whole game. And seven minutes in, three minutes left, it's just not enough, right? His team have got two kills. He's got three times more than the rest of his team combined. But there are still, what is that, six, seven tanks remaining on the enemy team that he's going to have to deal with if he wants to take this one down. And remember, because it's an assault, it's not enough to just hang around. The enemies are not going to attack. They're going to dig in. He has to cap the base or shut down all the remaining vehicles. Great decision there to aim at the lower plate of the 48 and the 0.3 accuracy, one of the beautiful aspects of this tank and the German engineering is accurate right through there and finally he takes a little bit of damage maybe there's hope for the enemy team guys or, or maybe not as the amx gets shut down by the tiger p and there you go 0.3 accuracy in there i'm sure zendera would have loved a bit of a higher roll there but not too bad now up to 8600 damage in a tier 9 medium tank and 3300 spotting zendera is putting the team on his back right now but his job is not done. Lovely shot there into the top of the Stura Mill and the Dorian Day Slayer on the enemy team is taken out. Okay, so having vanquished a 40, 48 on the enemy team, now he's going to have to deal with a 46. Lots of people now playing those French tank destroyers. And the Siren alerts the team that there are two minutes left. Now the T25-2 AT or oh, sorry, the T25-2 is just shooting him in the side here, but he's now of the split decision. Do you want to angle your armor to bounce the tier 7 American turreted tank destroyer, or do you want to bounce the, the unspotted Udes at the back of the map? It's really tough decision making here, and I guess having blocked the T25-2, he's pinged the map a couple of times to alert the T28 prototype to where he is, but the T28 prototype just simply isn't helping him out right now. Is he going to try and pull off a blind shot here? I guess he thinks that the T25-2 is closer than the T28 has never managed managed to get the proxy spot off. Okay, so finally, he spots the T25-2 on his left, but he gets into cover now, focusing on the 46 and that lovely juicy Coppola up there. Now up to the Radley Walters medal and that pesky T25-2 finally is spotted on the map and Zendariel has a lovely revenge shot there. And also the Udes that's been slinging shells at him is spotted as well. Now up to 12,000 combined. Make that wow. Oh my word, 13, I must have miscalculated that. He's up to 13 and a half, nearly thousand combined. But with 36 seconds left on the game, and he needs 33 seconds, we need this super pushing to come in. And thank goodness, did you guys think that this was going to be a heartbreak at the end here? No, the super pushing makes the correct play, enters the cap circle. And you know what? While Zendariel has put his team on his back, at least he's carried them to the cap circle, placed them down, and that's going to allow them to assist him in shutting down the enemy team 
picking up the cap and the Chrysler Grand Finals edition who seems to be just firing in high explosive rounds into this rock here. Okay. <laughs> I, I guess. I, <laughs> I don't even know. Do you think he was trying to shoot here? That's probably where I would shoot if I was trying to blind fire back into the cap circle. But that's it. With seven seconds left on the game. What an absolute tremendous carry here. And this is one of the greatest carries so far this patch. So unsurprisingly, this was an ace tanker. 2,267 experience. Pretty much four times what anyone else on his team was able to get. A pools medal for his 10 kills. A patrol's duty for scouting for his team. 3,387. What's simply incredible about this replay is usually when somebody does this kind of damage. 9,897 to net himself a high caliber he wouldn't have been spotting for himself. But not only was he, he was also spotting for the rest of his team. And a steel wall due to the sturdy armor of the E50, 22 shots received, 4,420 damage blocked, enough to kill his tank multiple times over, and he gets a tank sniper for doing most of that at long range as well. And even though he fired a few APCR rounds, he still makes 53,000 credits profit. So Zendaryl, congratulations to you. I'm not surprised if you've just booked in to see a chiropractor from carrying your team so hard you probably put your back out right thanks for putting my name in the title of the what replays upload and it also looks like zendarial is a streamer so you guys should go check him out on twitch.tv forward slash zendarial if you want to see more killer gameplay like this and hopefully all of you enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up i'd really appreciate it and if you're watching this video as it's released on sunday it's time for another tech tree showcase on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby and this week as it's the first sunday of the month i'm going to be doing the tech tree showcase on the t110e3 which is currently top of the tree on the european server and so come along right now where i'm going to be starting at tier one and making my way all the way towards the top american non-turreted tank destroyer and so you can see if it's a line that's worth grinding or maybe if you're grinding it as it is top of the tree pick up a few tips and tricks along the way and also today is the final day of my 20s i'm going to be streaming right up tonight until i ding 30 and i wonder if i'm going to feel any different so really looking forward to seeing as many of you as possible tonight on the live stream. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.